wide receiver scheme. Screen to Rashard. Got a block down the sideline. A cutback move, and there he goes. The 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. He's got a touchdown. Welcome back to the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas as we continue our coverage from 2015 Mountain West Football Media Days and our conversation with the student athletes. We are joined now by the Rams of Colorado State and Trent Matthews and Richard Higgins. Guys, last year was a, a phenomenal season in Fort Collins. The Rams go 10 and 3 overall, 6 and 2 in the Mountain West, finish second in the Mountain Division. You go on to a bowl game in Las Vegas. All of that, the, the good news, the bad news, at least initially, you lose your head coach. Jim McElwain t uh, takes a job at the University of Florida, but in comes a new guy with some great energy and great credentials in Mike Bobo. Comes from the University of Georgia and by all accounts has all kinds of energy. Trent, what have you seen out of Coach Bobo since he's arrived on campus that makes you excited that Colorado State football will not skip a beat and will remain at the 10-win plateau or better here in 2015? Uh, what he does is, uh, one thing, he's a family guy, for starters. Two, um, he's, uh, he does it for the players, no matter what the situation. If it's giving somebody uh, a pep talk on and off the field, um, life stories in the classroom, he does it all the way around. He just not, it's not just football with him. He has a lot of energy, like you said. Um, I'm pretty sure you've seen it throughout the interviews. He's really stoked for this season, first year head coach. Yeah. Um, he's he's honestly he might be more excited than we are. <laughs> well, you mentioned a player's coach. I mean, he was a great college player. He's been around the college game for a long time, and I understand that even when he's not around, fellas, he makes sure you guys are taken care of. So much so that uh, the other day, I understand that he may have surprised you guys after you know a workout or something. He may have surprised you with a treat. If we can show everyone what we're talking about. An ice cream truck pulls cream up on truck. campus, and you know, fellas get excited about hot days in Fort Collins. And Richard, who's in the ice cream truck ready to deliver you guys some, uh, some treats? Mike Bobo How comes fun out of the ice this? cream truck, and he's ready to serve ice cream, ready to everybody. It, this surprise you? Of course. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> what did you think when he sticks his head out and says you want a bomb <laughs> pop? I mean. Just this, he does it for, he does, he's there for us. Mm -hmm. He's, that was right there was just uh, showing us that, you know what, I'm not here just as your football coach. I'm here for you in life. And some of the guys that was kind of fishy, uh, I don't know if Bobo yeah. might be my coach. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really leaning on towards Mac. That right there just showcased what kind of guy he is. And he earned a lot of respect for most of the players on our team. Well, he inherited some great players right here. And, and Richard, I, I look at you and a guy who put Colorado State back on the map nationally speaking. You're a Blitnikoff finalist. You go to an award show. You have one of the best seasons ever for, at any position for a Colorado State Ram. Did you envision when you enrolled at Colorado State that you would have that sort of success and be placed on that sort of national pedestal? And well earned, by the way, but to be recognized as one of the best in college football. And you play in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, I had no idea. Um, coming to Colorado, it was a smooth transition, but it was tough. Um, with Michael Wayne um, and his um, idea of the bold new era, I bought into it. Um, I came to Colorado State, and I just told myself that I was going to make the best of my opportunity, and eventually it's, it's showing, fortunately. You, you lost your partner in crime and Garrett Grace, and he's, had, he's now in the NFL. Who are going to be the guys that are going to throw you the football? Because at the end of the day, you're going to be one of the leaders on offense. You're the playmaker, but someone's got to get you the football. Who can Ram fans look to and say, this is going to be the guy that replaces Garrett Grayson and gets the, the ball into the hands of 82? Um, I say it's a battle between two guys, Nick Stevens or Coleman Key. Um, I'm pretty sure whoever um, Coach Bobo chooses um, will be the best of the decision. and. As far as getting the timing and stuff down, I'm working with both of them to get that chemistry down and get their confidence up to deliver the ball this year. It takes a while, and on the defensive side of the football trend, uh, I've seen and, and read where coaches preach and violent on, on defense. You gotta be more aggressive. You gotta hit them harder than they wanna hit you, and if you're scared, you can't play for me. Is that what you see, and how much is on you as a defender and as a def leader on defense to make sure you employ what coaches is, is really preaching on the sidelines. Coach puts a lot of pressure on me to uh, get the defense going. And if you don't have it, uh, he's, he's instilled in us. He programmed us to be violent. He programmed us 
to uh to be physical um if people don't know if we're gonna be physical you can watch us on youtube on the grind and what you see there is reality we we're hitting constantly no matter what in in and out of practice in and out of drills we constantly we're just like rams really <laughs> and literally yeah sure hitting all the time i mean and if you don't want to hit he's he gonna make you love to hit you know so that's i think he 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 did that our d coordinator uh tyson summers does a good job of doing that and instilling us on the defensive side well we'll get a chance to see you guys out on the football field here soon let's take a look at the uh the schedule that the Rams will face here in 2015. It includes a couple of, of big games against some, some high caliber teams. Going to start off with Savannah State, but then you get a shot at the Gophers coming to Fort Collins. Minnesota going to pay a visit to Hughes Stadium. That customary game, that traditional game against the University of Colorado typically opens things up on Labor Day weekend. Push back to the third weekend of the season. Then you got Texas San Antonio before you really get into the Mountain West schedule. And look at that right in a row, fellas. At Utah State, you got Boise State, you got Air Force, and San Diego State. Those are four teams right in a row that are picked right at the top uh, of their divisions that are going to compete for for Mountain West championships, as predicted by the media. I mean, Richard, you look at that. Uh, that's a pretty hefty schedule especially front-loaded the first half of the season will certainly mm -hmm. test you guys yes sir it will um i mean every team that we face um we gotta have a mindset of, uh, that we're gonna win um if we don't come out to play we know on any given day that um somebody else can beat us and um just having that mindset that um we're gonna come out and win we gotta have it Trey, you like that that colorado game being pushed off of the uh, the opening week of the season. It's always a great way to kick off football in the state of Colorado. People get excited about it, but it also puts so much on that opening weekend. You guys played outstanding against the Buffs last year. Um, Man, uh, I wish it was the opener. I mean, that gets both teams ready to play their whole season. Yep. I mean, but it's okay for change. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a part of the, uh, the schedule. Um, they're going to be the third game, and that's fine with us. It's, that's just, we just put in two games on our belt, we should be ready to play by then. Well, no doubt that everyone knows about the Rams, nationally speaking, because of what they did last year and because of, of what you were able to accomplish individually. And I, I got to ask, you know, they say, you know, your nickname Hollywood, where'd you get the name Hollywood? Um, well, it came from Pee Wee. Um, <laughs> I remember I played uh, defense and I played safety at the time. And um, I think I came down and I drilled a kid and um, after the game, my coach was like, um, keep doing things like that, I'm call you Hollywood. Um, ever since then, that name just stuck around, and um, to this day, people still call me Hollywood. Some people got their own video games, you got your own popcorn. Uh, it always, Hollywood goes better with popcorn, I suppose. Yes, sir. Right here, if we can get a shot of, of the, uh, the popcorn with Richard Higgins, right there, huh? <laughs> now, let me, t I gotta ask you, you gotta taste this for us. Is this like Hollywood corn, or is it better? Let me. That's Hollywood corn right there. <laughs> go, go out and get you some. Go out Coming and get to you a grocery some. store near you. <laughs> Perry, it might sell out too. There you go. The Colorado State Rams. I appreciate you guys making time for us here today. Good yes, luck sir. to you guys right. in the upcoming season against the uh, the Mountain West schedule, and then that opener against Savannah State. Yes, sir. Thanks for the Rams of Colorado State, Trent Matthews and Richard Higgins. When we come back here. On the Mountain West Network, live from the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, we're going to be joined by the Wyoming Cowboys from Laramie, Wyoming, Sean Wick and Eddie Yarbrough right after this, live on the Mountain West Network.